Hello and welcome to episode 21 of Cold Case Christmas. We're on the home straight now, we're nearly there. December 24th will be the final episode of this series. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's plenty to dig into. Each Cold Case Christmas is in a playlist, so if you've missed some, then you can always go back, play through the playlist at your leisure and listen to them all. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the bizarre disappearance of 22-year-old Jamie Fraley. Let's get into it. Jamie Fraley was a 22-year-old woman from Gastonia, North Carolina. She'd not had an easy life. She struggled with bipolar disorder and anxiety. It made it difficult for her to graduate from high school and also to obtain a driver's license. As a result, she relied a lot on people to drive her around, take her to appointments, shopping, etc. But Jamie tried her best. She did really try her best and she'd set her sights on attending Gaston College part-time because she wanted to become a substance abuse counsellor. She liked helping people, she understood what mental ill health was like and she wanted to give back, she wanted to help others, she wanted to make her life successful. And in recent months, you know, she'd been responding well to her medications and she was making good strides in her life. In 2006, Jamie moved into an apartment with her fiancé, Ricky Simmons Jr. Unfortunately though, Ricky went to jail. He was convicted of crimes related to larceny and he was sentenced to 15 months, beginning in January of 2007. So while Ricky was in prison, she wrote him letters, she kept in regular contact with him, and all the while she carried on at college working towards her end goal of becoming a substance abuse counsellor. While Ricky was away, Ricky's father, Ricky Simmons Senior, we'll just call Simmons, lived with his girlfriend Kim just a few doors down from Jamie. And Simmons had his own demons. He had a criminal record, it included a conviction for manslaughter, which he did a 20 year sentence for in 1986 after he strangled an ex-girlfriend, which is a big red flag when you learn what happens next. However, he didn't do 20 years. He was released in 1992 on parole, so he actually only did six years inside. After that, he faced charges relating to theft, drugs, larceny. He basically just could not get his act together. He could not keep his life clean. However, Simmons did a regular job he was a maintenance worker in the apartment complex in which he and Jamie both lived. And when his son Ricky Jr. was away in prison, he developed a friendship with Jamie and he would help her out. He would run errands for her, he'd take her to places, and he was a help, he was helpful. Eventually, Kim and Simmons broke up and it's speculated that Simmons had a light shining for Jamie that perhaps wasn't reciprocated, but that's just a speculation. So Ricky Jr., Jamie's boyfriend, was set to be released on April 29th, 2008. Unfortunately, just three weeks before Ricky Jr.'s release date, Jamie went missing. So it happened like this, on April 8th, 2008, Jamie called her aunt to say she'd been to the hospital. She'd woken up with intense stomach pains and the doctor had believed she'd just got a stomach flu, sent her on with medications, told her to rest, drink plenty of fluids, you know, that kind of the usual stuff that doctors tell you to do when you've got a, a stomach bug. And she did. She planned to rest for the rest of the day. But Jamie's aunt wasn't sure she was worried about this stomach flu diagnosis, especially because the pain wasn't going away, the medication wasn't working. In fact, the pain was getting worse. So that evening, Jamie decided to go back to the hospital and she asked Simmons for a ride. And allegedly, he dropped her off at the hospital. 
When she learned she'd be unable to see a doctor for several hours because it was just back to back, it was just really busy, she called him back for a ride home. Anyway, allegedly he didn't answer, so she asked another friend for help. Just after midnight, so this was April 8th, just turned April 9th, 2008, witnesses saw Jamie enter her apartment for the last time, so she did make it home from the hospital. While inside, she called her mother to discuss her symptoms. Jamie's mother wanted to come round, pick her up, take her to her place, but Jamie said, no, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. I've got an appointment the day after with a social security administration person, so she kind of needed to be there to meet with this person. And she said, look, I'm going to just go to bed and I'll be better in the morning. So the next morning rolled around, so this is still April the 9th. Jamie's health provider knocked on the door to pick her up to go to this appointment and no one answered. The door was locked. So eventually this person left. She had other people to see. She was, you know, on the clock, so she left. Now it's a little bit unclear, it's contradictory as to when specifically Jamie's family realised she was missing. But it was Jamie's mother that reported the fact that Jamie just wasn't answering her door. No one could get in touch with her. So on April the 11th, a police officer on behalf of Jamie's mother went round to Jamie's apartment for a welfare check. And there was nothing strange. There was no sign of forced entry or a struggle. Jamie just wasn't there. So it's not like Jamie to go away and not tell anyone. Remember, she couldn't drive. She was anxious. She didn't like going places on her own. So it was really odd. So members of Jamie's family, it was her mother, a cousin and an aunt, appeared at the apartment to look for her. A cursory look round by a police officer is one thing, but they knew what they were looking for. And they found that Jamie had left her door keys and her purse behind. Now she would never leave her door keys or her purse. Her phone, however, was missing. They also noticed that Jamie had been sick. She'd vomited throughout the apartment, almost as if this stomach flu had just taken on a life of its own and she didn't make it to a sink or a, a toilet. She was just sick. So they were really worried, really worried. They also noticed her shoes. She had a favorite pair of shoes, which were there, but the laces were missing which was just odd. So they called the cops again and reported all of this. And in the meantime, they carried on calling Jamie's phone. And eventually a man answered, claiming that he worked for a cable company and he'd found the phone while out repairing phone lines. It was in the road, three miles away from the apartment. And it was broken. It looked like it had been thrown out of a vehicle. So the family were beside themselves with worry at this point. Unfortunately, police officers couldn't pull prints from the phone because it had been handled by so many people. They brought tracker dogs to search the area, but didn't find anything. So eventually, authorities were able to pull Jamie's phone records. They noted that her last call was to a friend and she told this friend that her ride, a mysterious he, was there to take her to the hospital, but yet she was never checked in to any hospital. So Simmons, Ricky's dad, Simmons Senior, was one of several neighbors interviewed by the police. They thought he was being deceptive. They just got a, a, a thing that it just was something not right about him and what he was saying, especially as they traced him to a bag of trash found alongside a road. Based on information they obtained, authorities got a warrant to surveil Simmons. It was about this time that Ricky Jr., Simmons' son, had been released from prison. And he was out of his mind with worry. He cooperated with the police. Obviously, Jamie's disappearance has nothing to do with him because she disappeared while he was inside. So the investigation continued and they continued to surveil Simmons. Concerningly, as part of the surveillance, they found out that he was actually stalking his ex-girlfriend Kim, the one that he'd split up with recently. They warned Kim that he was stalking her, 
And she said, yeah, he's got a violent past. He's been violent with her in the past. And eventually, about a month after Jamie disappeared, she ended up getting a restraining order against him. It, things got that bad. Now on June 7th, so Jamie's been missing a couple of months at this point, June 7th, 2008, Kim got in her car. It just smelt bad. So she investigated and bizarrely, a bizarre twist to this story, she opened the trunk and Simmons was inside dead. It seems that he'd crawled in her trunk with some of Kim's personal items and a knife. The autopsy, it was confirmed that he'd been dead in the trunk of this car for two days. He had drugs and alcohol in his system, but even so, why would he lock himself in the trunk of a car? Well, we don't know. He's not alive to tell us. But was he stalking Kim so much so that he was going to climb in her trunk and be driven around unbeknowings and then he's died? He's died of heat stroke. He's not been able to get out. A bizarre, bizarre thing. But where is Jamie? Now, there are several theories, but there's no answers. The main theory, I think the one that the police worked from, was that it was Simmons, that Simmons killed Jamie. For whatever reason, maybe they had an argument, maybe she spurned his advances, but he's not here now to tell the tale. It's possible that she wasn't as well controlled in terms of her bipolar medications and her anxiety meds that people thought, and she wandered away of her own volition. But where is she? Why has why she never been found? She could have wandered off and someone else abducted her. But we don't know. The investigation as it was, and up until the point that Simmons was uh, found dead, led to him. But police didn't have enough evidence for an arrest. So that's where we are today. Jamie, before she disappeared, she weighed less than 95 pounds. She was only four foot eight tall. She was tiny, blonde hair and blue eyes. And she had a tattoo that says Ricky on her ankle. So if you were in the area at the time, April 2008, do you remember anything? Do you remember seeing Jamie? Do you remember seeing her with Simmons? Please do contact Gaston County Police Department on 704 866 Three three two zero. Oh. Any information at all could reignite this case and get it moving again, because Jamie has never been found. Her family have never had any answers about what happened to Jamie Fraley. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments below, and I'll see you very soon in the next episode of Cold Case Christmas. Bye, guys. <laughs>